Bear Podcast 476. It involves showing more fur. There's <laughs> nothing like making a pig bottom squeal than using bacon. Loop. Village, they're full of cake. Hey, all you bears. Okay, I just saw this on Facebook today. I think he's classic. You think he's just classic? And I got my ass chewed out by everyone. <laughs> Thanks, Gil. The gay, the geek, and the bizarre. Laying on the couch, you can buy bonds and then jump. Just that, I can be smart the next day. <laughs> Do some sexting with You're me. listening to BearPodcast.com. He called and then he was freaked out. You're really bitter here. Yeah, I am very bitter. bitter. bitter it's been party a shitty one week. A bitter here. party of one right here. It's been a shitty week, let me tell you. Welcome everyone to Bear Podcast. I am Nard. And I am Ray. Yes, and uh, welcome to episode 476. And it's July 8th. Actually, we're recording this on a Monday. And... It's been a busy week because it was a... Fourth of July week. July weekend. <laughs> well, it was the fourth of July, and then most of us had to go to work on Friday, and then it was the weekend. That's right. I had to work on Friday. I had to work on Friday. I had to work on Friday, too. I thought that was kind of lame. I thought it was, work was dead all day Friday. I mean, I got stuff caught up, but it was like, why couldn't you just give us that extra day? That one extra day it's out of the sandwich. Year. Might as well give it to us. Yeah. Yeah. You know. but- uh, I think in the past we did. They there they gave year, it to us. There's years that we got it off too, but not since then. It's mm-hmm. been like three or four years ago that that happened. Mm-hmm. And ever since then, it's like, nope. And I was just like, oh, come on. <laughs> oh, well. Okay, so last uh, to, uh, Thursday, during Fourth of July weekend, I would like to uh, give uh, you know shout-outs to Guy and Carl. Thank you for inviting us. It's a great Fourth of July uh, uh, weekend, uh, Fourth of July uh, pool party. It's their fourth annual and it was great. Lots of people. I met a couple of new people, and of course, old friends. It was really fun. And Mike was there too. So and Mike it was, was there too. It's a lot I of fun. Pictures, yeah. Mm-hmm. I was busy unpacking and doing house stuff, so we were on a roll, so we didn't stop. Oh, and that okay. train got rolling. I was like, we ain't stopping for nothing <laughs> until it ran out of steam. So we worked all day on the house. So. That's why you were away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we didn't get done till about six o'clock that night. So. And we finally slowed down and started resting. So, mm-hmm. so you guys were busy too. Yes. With uh, with, with Patrick and Jerry moving. Right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, Saturday we helped Patrick and Jerry move some stuff up to their new ranch out in BFE. Um, because they bought a ranch and they're moving. They have to build the house by this weekend. Not a ranch house, but a real ranch. ranch. Okay. So. Like George W. Ranch. Yeah, I think I'm going to try to talk to Patrick and Jerry about doing a reality show <laughs> once they get set up. And I'm looking at it like it's going to be a cross between Dallas and Honey Boo Boo. Okay, we can do that. So I think it should be interesting. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. But no, they got a beautiful place up there. A lot of grass to mow. Hopefully I won't have to be doing it. Um, <laughs> so they got to get some animals first, but they got to get moved in. I mean, why so. get a. Why mow it? Just get just get the animals. They would eat it well, all. Well, I mean, you can hire people to come cut the grass and make hay and stuff out of it. But, you know, it's still a lot of grass. Mm-hmm. So, but that's what they wanted to do. So, they're out there in BFE, almost to Austin, like our people from our interview today. They're in South Austin. South Austin, yeah. Because you much. pass the Beltway and you keep going. And you pass the Grand Parkway and you keep going. And then you finally get there at Bucky's. So. Wow. Okay, so that's uh, kind of interesting. I, I, I'm looking forward to to see their house, yeah, to see so. the ranch style house. And so. well, by the time they have a uh, when they open it, up, you know, to 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 friends, do you think they'll 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 have uh, animals already? I don't know. Well, you know, they got the dogs. So oh yeah, they're pretty big dogs. Yeah, so they must be so happy because of the big space. I don't know about that. Are they three? Three Dobermans? Three Dobermans, yes. Three Dobermans. So, three big Dobermans. Yeah, one of the first projects when he gets caught up, up that when he gets moved in is I got to go up and have him fence in the backyard, which is partially fenced, so the dogs can be let out and they can go roam, but they can't get away. So mm-hmm. um, that's one of the projects we're going to do. But also this weekend, Sunday, I spent my morning at Patrick's house. Since he's he sold his house, and his house is in a, is called, is in a section of Houston called Oak Forest. Okay. And Oak Forest is turning into McMansionville. Oh, really? Which means all these houses that are built back in the 40s and 50s are small and little, but they have decent sized lots. Mm-hmm. So builders are going in and buying the ho- buying the houses and bulldozing them down and building McMansions on them. Wow! So that's what's going to happen to his house. So um, all those work all be destroyed. Yeah. So he's got a pool at his house, 
So he told me, he said, well, we can take anything. We had it in the contract that since they're destroy, demolishing the house, we could take anything we want. So he gave me all of his pool equipment, which he had replaced. Oh, really? Years ago. Oh, yeah. perfect. So I was over there cutting pipe your... and pulling all that stuff out, removing, unwiring, and all that kind of stuff. Oh. So I got it all hauled over to my house. So hopefully this fall or this winter, I can find some uh, pool installation person to come over and get everything installed and hooked up correctly for me. Do they have a pool in the new house? No, it does not have a pool. It's got a watering trough. Same thing. <laughs> okay. So, you know, but that was my weekend, working all weekend. So That would be weird. Not spending time seminar. with the O'Donnell family because Open Sesame happens tomorrow. So, Open Sesame. Oh. That's yeah, right. that's what we're calling Robbie's dad's heart open, surgery. Open so, Sesame. Because when they get, he's getting a tabby, and what they do is they go into the heart, and what happens is when the valves start failing, it's because they calcify. Mm -hmm. So they go in and put this balloon thing down in there and pop it open. And it cracks all the calcium, so it's like open sesame. Oh, okay. And then they go put in the artificial valve. So that's all happening tomorrow, so prayers. Well, yes. Thoughts and prayers, please. Yeah, so we've been calling open sesame all this time. So. Okay. Sounds exciting. Yeah. But you got a busy week in coming up. Well. Because you're going on vacation. That's true. I will be in, um, in P-Town again, just like last year. With uh, all the bears. Which reminds me, it, it's actually our wedding anniversary. One year wedding anniversary. One year wedding anniversary. Last year, Ray was our solemnizer. He was the, He's our justice of the peace. And that's on July 12th. And now, a year after, this, actually this coming Friday, we're flying to Boston. And then from there, we'll go to P-Town. And yeah, it's going to be an exciting, exciting week. We're going to yeah. be there. And also, um, I'll be hanging out with Dave. Dave will be there too. So, uh, Dave will be in the next show. So. Dave and James and a whole bunch of others. Yeah, there's a lot. Year. James, James, and a lot Justin. of people from Houston going. Oh yeah, there's a lot. No, James, the other James. The other James. B. James B. Oh, James B. Yeah, James. So. Yeah. So, who are y'all staying with this year? I got the same. Uh, still with the uh, well, with the same group, uh, uh, Carrie and and uh, Benny. Benny. Okay, well, be that's cool. So Kenny and Benny, uh, Kerry and uh, Benny were in the P Town show that we recorded last year too. So if yeah. you guys go back to last year's P Town episode, uh, that was I won't fun. be there this year. Yeah, Ray won't be there. Too bad. Maybe again. Maybe next year. You know what sucks? We don't have bikes. You gotta forget there's Mike a bike. screwed up. He's supposed to rent bikes, but he thought last year he rented the week before and he got it. This year it got it ran out even though he had he had two weeks in advance. Yeah, still he, he didn't get any. Yeah. Well, so. we were talking to somebody last week about going to P Town, so I hope they rented their bike after the show. Mm -hmm. That's and right. They, they got their bike, so you might not have, <laughs> maybe you can borrow it from them. So. Yeah, that's right. Oh, you guys, if you're watching this and you're going to P Town, if you have any bike suggestions, uh, let us know. Okay, coming up next, actually, it's our uh, interview with Dave and Rich from the Lone Star Bears, and uh, I've been. We've been talking for the longest time. Also, they've kind of uh, uh, helped us also to get together. It just reminded me, oh, we should uh, talk about it, Austin Chill, uh, coming up for uh, for Labor Day weekend. Yeah. And uh, we've been we've been planning this for some time. It's just that we got around to it now, yes. Yeah, uh, yeah so here is our interview with Dave and Rich. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> nice. Nice butt. Yeah, sure. So what's your number? Can I buy you a beer? <laughs> Do you work out a lot? Do you come here often? Woof, what a bear. Joining us today are our friends from Austin, Dave and Rich from the Low Star Bears. Welcome to the show, guys. Hey, guys. Hey, gentlemen. Hey, how are you? Hey. <laughs> it's good to uh, talk to you guys. Uh, we've been in contact for some time. I know I've always wanted to have you guys on the show to uh, promote one of your events. In, uh, yeah, and I've always wanted to have you guys on uh, a long time ago when you guys doing, were doing the unruns, but uh, we couldn't get it... Uh, get together back then. But now, yeah, we have a big event coming up this uh, this uh, Labor Day weekend. So it's going to be exciting. So what, but first, uh, what, 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 what part of Austin are you guys in? We are in the North Central District, closer to, uh, we're north of the campus, north of the city center. Oh, okay. Wow, okay. How close are you to Matthew McConaughey? Um, not that close. Damn. Okay. <laughs> he lives there? I didn't know he lives there. Yeah, he has a house in Austin. 
Oh, really? Matthew McConaughey, of all people. I think he's got a house up on the lake somewhere. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So, so, all right. So, we're having you guys in the show. That around here, too. Oh, he does? Okay. <laughs> okay. So, uh, we are here to uh, talk about your event. What, what is the, you, you're doing the, um, what do you call this? The uh, Austin Chill. So, tell us, tell us more about your upcoming event. Well, we've been doing for the last four years an event here in Austin called the Weekend of Bear Brotherhood. And right. it's just been getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And uh, a couple of the guys suggested that, hey, why don't we do a hotel-based event and see how that goes. So that's what we're trying this year. We have a hotel, and uh, it's got about 165 rooms available, and we'd love to be able to sell it out. Okay. What part of Austin will it be in? It's actually right at the intersection of 290 and 35. Oh, okay. So that's pretty easy to get to. Mm-hmm. It's in the same area as a... It's almost across the street from Papa Cito to Papa Do's. <laughs> nice landmarks. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, so what would be the activities for our friends who are coming? Actually, it's going to be a... Two day, three night pool party. Oh, oh, nice! This is a pool party every each night. Okay. We're going to do uh, the pool's going to be open twenty. We're going to try to keep the pool open twenty four seven. Nice. We have events uh, that we're coordinating with different bars in Austin for people that want to go and experience the nightlife. We're going to be doing a. Uh, a party barge on uh, Lake Travis. Um, mm-hmm. The hotel where we are also has a uh, shuttle service in house. So if people want to um, rent the limos and go out to Hippie Hollow or go out to the wine country or, or just go out and check out the Texas Hill Country, they can do day trips like that. But we're keeping it at... Um, Hotel centered. Oh, that's oh cool. okay. All right. How many people you are expecting to show? We're looking at maybe between 250, 300. Wow, oh, that's, that's a, a good lot. number. That's big. Yeah. So yeah, what we're, kind? Of, what? This is our first uh, real attempt at uh, putting together a nice uh, package for not only our friends throughout the country. Uh, we have some people that are coming from other countries as well for this. Uh, being that they haven't um, been to Austin, Texas, this is a perfect opportunity for them to come experience what Austin is really all about because we've named it Austin Chill because every time we talk to someone, they're like, hey, man, we hear your city's really chilled out and really relaxed, but being that it's a warm city that time of year, we just thought, hey, why not call it Austin Chill? And uh, not only do we have all those people coming, but we have our friends from uh, the cast members from uh, where the Bears are, from Los Angeles, are going to be here in attendance as well. Oh, okay. oh, that's cool. That's awesome. So are they going to be doing anything while they're there? Signing? Oh, yeah. They're going to have their own um, vendor type. Uh, they're going to be selling T-shirts and CDs and, and doing autographs and, and just meeting people, getting to know everybody. They're, they're oh, pretty, that's nice. They're just a nice down-to-earth bunch of guys, and they just want to promote this show, and the best way to do it is to just be nice and, you know, and, and say hi. Well, that's a good way to meet people and get the word out to people that haven't heard of uh, where the Bears are. So, mm-hmm. What's going to be the cost to attend the event? Well, what it is, it's uh, different room costs. Basically, the... Uh, the most economical package is if four friends share a double queen room, it comes out to about $150 for the three-night package. Oh, wow. That's cheap. Yeah. For, the whole, for the whole weekend. Any additional run fee. And that, and that, that includes your uh, shuttle service to downtown, uh, breakfast every day, and the hospitality suite. Oh, okay. It's a style barbecue. Oh, that's good. 
So basically, the ho once you pay for your hotel room, it's all inclusive of what you're offering. Yeah. Yes. That's okay. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So this is kind of different from the uh, from the old uh, runs that you guys did, which are unruns. Like um, the, you know, the, you you just need to appear. You just you just show up and and it became a big event. It, is this a, a, a sort of an unrun also? Uh, no, this was, this was, this was going to be more of a, uh, just a small, intimate group. Similar to, it's going to be like a, a bear watch type of event. Just a small mm -hmm. bunch of guys that just wanted to hang out and have a good time. Mm -hmm. Or if and you just... been to uh, Chuck Fest and Palm Springs, it's a wonderful event. People just sit back have their favorite beverages all day, spend the day in the sun and go out for meals and, and just have a good time getting to know each other. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. yeah, I wish I could go. Um, actually, I'll be out of town that weekend and uh, our friend Dave is going. Are you, are you going, Ray? No. I doubt I will be able to go. Oh, okay. I'm yeah. married now. You know, <laughs> fun's not allowed anymore. We have a lot of friends from Houston who are going and they're excited to go and they've been talking about it a lot and stuff like that and you know the, the houston bears and the dallas bears our brothers the dallas bears i i can't say enough about how wonderful they've been in supporting us and helping us and trying to help us get this off the ground and get it going and it's all about building brotherhood and building bridges between all the communities well, that's true, because putting on a run, uh, an event of any kind is not easy. No, it's not. No, it's definitely not easy at all, and it's so great that we have a lot of the Lone Star Bear members and even some guys that are friends of the group who have raised their hands when they, we finally said, hey, this is something that we're going to do. And uh, they said, hey, how can we help? And uh, without their help um, and their support and getting the word out about you know, the Lone Star Bears putting on this, this our, our true first uh, bear run. Um, we got people sending emails every day, the Facebook page, or especially our website, LoneStarBears.com. And they're taking a look at the video clip because uh, where the bears are made a, a video for us in regards to this event. And uh, mm. all the support that we've gotten across the board. So, you know, it's hard to believe it's, it's next month. And we've been yeah, I know. I know. We've been planning for this for a while, and uh, yeah. the uh, the response has been absolutely amazing. And we know that we're going to get a flood of registrants maybe the last two to three weeks of the event. So we're expecting to have a party. That's what it's going to be a Texas style, you know, Bear Brotherhood get together and you know party in the sun and all that good stuff and build memories. Okay. Well, that's good. That's Where good. can people go to find out more information about the event? They can go directly to our website, which would be LoneStarBears.com. They'll take a look at a, a, a tab up there that says uh, Bear Brotherhood, and that's going to give them all the information as far as who, what, where, cost, the whole entire breakdown, uh, information about the hotel, information about the, the shuttle service, uh, the hospitality, and uh, a whole bunch of other stuff. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's awesome. one thing I want to be able to, I want to add to this. This uh, the hotel is actually uh, family owned and family operated, and it's being newly renovated. Oh. Putting, oh, that's cool! They're that's putting good. a lot of money into uh, into renovating the hotel, and we've seen some of the new rooms, and they really look great. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's exciting! Oh, that's good. It's always good when you can do business in the community. Yes. Yeah. Family well, owned. Okay. The exciting thing about this too is that when people do the math on the packages, uh, you know, we had a buddy who said, "Hey, you know, four of us really want to go, but you know, five hundred ninety nine bucks per person is really steep." And I said, "No, somebody just misread. Basically, it's five hundred ninety nine bucks divided by four. And they said, mm -hmm. "Okay, that makes sense. Okay, it's one hundred fifty bucks per person, basically." And they said, okay, so what's the run fee on top of that? So what we're trying to do different is we're trying to offer a package to where it's, you know, with no run fee. And it's just, uh, you know, all, these are all the bullet points as far as all the things that you're going to get for the package. And 
once people do the math and just go, wow, uh, it's pretty inexpensive for everything that you get, including the hospitality with all the, the beer and the cocktails that are also included in this. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, that's cool. That is kind of cheap. Yeah. Very cheap. Yeah. And it's in the neighborhood, you know, it's easy. And it's a holiday weekend, too. It's a holiday weekend, also. Yeah, you can't get anything cheaper than that. Yeah. (laughs) For a holiday weekend. Well, you get to hang out in the pool and you get to meet all kinds of people from all over the place. And, uh, you know, you get to take in Austin. And and we're really excited about showing off our city to a lot of people that have never been here. Yep, that's right. That's good. Okay. Well, guys, what, what was some final words y'all like to say about the event? Well, we just hope everybody really comes and has a great time and just gets to get a good experience with Austin. And everybody comes away making more friends. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So, well, thank you uh, so much, Rich and Dave, for joining us in the show. And for all you guys uh, who are watching or listening, go to uh, LoneStarBears.com for more information on how to register to um, uh, for the Austin Chill event. Thank you very, very much. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Dave and Rich, for uh, joining us. And uh, like I said earlier, if you want to uh, register for the Austin Chill, go to LoneStarBears.com. We'll put the links on the website for you guys to check out. Sorry. All right. So now on to movie TV news. Movie TV Brr. news. What do you have with us? Well, uh, let's talk about multiple platforms for movies and TV shows. Recently, we talked about Bear City and the book that is now coming out for them. Oh, yeah. Bear City, the, mo- the, the novel. The novel. Bear City, the novel. Battlestar Galactica, the reimaged series on sci fi, had webisodes. True Blood and The Walking Dead are based on print material. Um, True, uh, True Blood's based on a series of books. And Walking Dead's based on comic, comic books, books. Um, but both have TV shows that are different from their original release as a comic book or as a series of novels. Mm-hmm. They've taken on their own life and their own that's right. world that's totally different from the books. It both has some, of them, both Walking of them Dead, Dead and True Blood. So, mm-hmm. so here comes another one. Beneath comic showcases the movie's Black Lake Monster. Tie-in delves into the mysteries of the director Larry Fenderson's underwater creature. It's not even a safe to go into the water in the comic books of horror movies. A digital comic based on director Larry Fassenden. Fassenden's film, Beneath, comes out this week and delves into the story of the mysterious Black Lake and its amphibious monster. This show also explores the important necklace carried by Johnny, one of the teens who goes on a fateful trip into the water in the movie, out in select theaters and on video on demand on July 15th. So here we go. So here's what I want to talk about. We got this movie coming out. Okay. They've done a webisode comic, uh, online comic book for it to give backstory and stuff. Where do we stop at doing that? Oh, are we giving too much? Are we getting t- giving too much information out there? Um, let me see. Well, it, there's a promise to veer away from from uh, from the original. Well. well well, here's what I, look at this way. Star Wars come out. Okay. And I guess it was the first one really to do this. Star Wars come out, and then the whole Star Wars universe expanded with the novels. That's right. Yeah. And they got comic books. Mm-hmm. And then they got cartoons. Yeah, the Clone Wars. Like the Clone that. Wars, yeah. and it just keeps expanding, expanding. And I remember when I was reading all the Star Wars books, I got fed up because it was too much. They had too many series going on. I couldn't keep up, and I just got burned out on reading so much. So you're saying you would rather have a genre stop at some point? No, I'm not. Well, I think it's cool that they're doing the multiple things. And I have been in movies where I said, "Damn, I wish there was more story to this," and there was a way to go fill in some of the gaps. And they and people do this with like the webisodes and other stuff um, that go on it. Nope. Sorry, audience. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Yes, sir. My gayness is just overwhelming the mic. You just hurt their ears. I know, I just hurt their ears. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> but, and I, and I like it to a certain point, but is it more about marketing and sales? So, hey, I got to go buy a comic book online to follow what happened in this movie, to follow what's going on, you know, and it gets like, is it cross-marketing making too much money or is it trying to fill in the gap or is it just too much? I would say, yes, it is more on the money. 
yeah, so I don't see why not. If they're really cashing it in, then why not? However, there are some, some franchise, some uh, franchises who I, which, which I believe, not Star Wars, I'm think, uh, let, let's say Star Trek. Mm -hmm. Star Trek is one continuous one, continuous franchise that, that's been going on for decades. Decades. Yeah. And they've done comic books, they, they've, they've done, done movies, also, they've done TV shows. But they're not really that big. Do you, do you think that they're really big? They're not. No. I mean, each one has its own following. That's right. That, each one is, is, has its own following. Star Wars right now is really big. Yeah. Because especially now that Disney bought it. Yeah. And they're going to make more. Yeah. They're going to make more. Now, that's really because of marketing. Yeah. Star Trek, you know, on the, on the other hand, is more of a... Uh, because of you, have, you have a following. Yeah. You have an audience. You have a, a specific nerdy audience who really yeah. like it. Although it, the movies are good for some people, and some people say they don't like it, like like the last Star Trek films, yeah. not many like it. But the ones who who are fans yes. of of the Star Trek franchise, yes, they do like it. And all like all I can say is it's not more, it's not really for the, um, it's not really much of the of the marketing. Yeah. It's really more for the fans. That's the way I look at it. I don't know how about you guys? You, yeah, what do y'all think? I mean, do y'all think that at some point, they should just do a movie and be done with it? Or do you think people should like, okay, let's let's write a book, let's tie it into a movie, let's have a comic book series and flesh out different things in each one? Because what used to drive me crazy is back in the comic book days in the 80s when I was doing, when I was collecting comic books religiously, you had the classic X-Men and then you had the uncanny X-Men and then you had X-Men this and X and everything just kept split. X Factor and it just kept splitting uh, and splitting out. And all of them, and you had to keep up with all the series yeah. to make one storyline and one comic book match all the way through. And then you have crossovers. Overs and all that kind of stuff. Oh. And then you had this, the 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 higher price Legion of Superheroes, which dealt with a different storyline, but it also tied in with the regular Legion of Superheroes that was going on. And you had to keep both comics going mm -hmm. so you could keep up with the whole storyline. So I just hope it doesn't get into that where they're kind of competing with each other and you have to follow the one to keep up with the other one. Yeah. So, I mean, because there's still things like the Battlestar Galactica web episodes I never got to see. Mm -hmm. And apparently there was some, there's the whole thing about Gato being gay and going on a date in the web episodes that I never got to see that was talked about on, mm -hmm. online in different forms. So. See, the ones who are doing those are really just because they're dedicated to the franchise. Franchise, yeah. Not because of marketing. I mean, Right now, if it's really big, but it, it is marketing be on, because they it were is, it is because if I remember, marketing. they were doing it in between the the seasons or the or if I remember the fall break to the winter spring break when they have don't have stuff playing, they were doing the webisodes to keep everybody interested. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then it picked back up. And even though the show, the overall arc of the show, didn't have that much to do with the webisodes, it was something to keep people there thinking about it. So, mm -hmm. yeah, okay, so that's interesting to see. So what do you guys think? Email us. Show yeah. at bearpodcast.com. So, but call, anyway, call um, <laughs> if you want to follow about Beneath, the Beneath comic was written by screenwriters Tony Daniel and uh, Brian D. Smith and illustrated by Brian Revel, uh, who did Gorillas, will be available for digital download on Wednesday by our comicsology. So ah. if you want to go check it out before the movie comes out and get some tie-in and tell us what you think about it and then go see the movie. If they're, I have a feeling that if they're releasing the movie at select theaters and then video on demand on July 15th, it's going to be one of those movies that, yeah, it might be a good movie, but it's not good enough to make it at the summer box office. No. So. And what happens is, of course, the fans who follow the franchise are the ones giving the money. Yeah. And it's not really as big as Harry Potter or, or, yeah. or what else, or X-Men or stuff like that. So, so, yeah. Okay, so, yeah, good article there. Yeah. Okay, so on with the gay, the geek, and the bizarre. Okay, our gay this week. I just about melted when I was oh, saw God. what was trending today. He made me watch the video, guys. But oh my God. did you like the song? I liked it. Okay. I liked the song. Okay. For a country song, it was good. Okay. What's trending right now that I noticed today, and that it was all over the news and stuff on different news platforms I look at, um, but the, the question is, is Steve Grand the first openly gay male singer? Um, and this, this comes from... Uh, edgeonthenet.com, and they're talking about Steve Grant, who's a young man from Chicago. Uh, he released a music video called All-American Boy, just in time for Independence Day, which he's singing about, 
and it's all the buzz on the internet, um, and it's labeling the music musician as the first openly gay country singer. So really not to be confused song. with Keith Urban and Keith Urban. Um, Randy Travis or any of the others that have been alleged. You know, let, well, I don't think Vince Gill's gay. I don't think I've ever heard that rumor. Oh, no. So, but, you know, the, Vince Gill's the, gay? No. Okay. Allegedly, but no. Oh, God. Allegedly, I wish he was. all these country singers have been pegged as gay. Um, but you can watch the video. I think it. the guy's an incredible singer. And I'm not a big country music fan, but I watched the video and listened to you it. You just like, think he's hot. Well, he is hot. I will admit that. He is <laughs> damn hot. But I thought it was a great video. I thought the song was incredible. Mm -hmm. He has an incredible voice. And I hope it comes up that he actually does something, that he can actually get a career out of this. So He's got a nice, um, nice ass. The singer too. who hails from Chicago made he media headlines this week with BuzzFeed and other sites dubbing Grant as the first openly gay male country singer. On July 2nd, he released a video on his Facebook page with the message, After all these years, this is my song, my story, my dream. Um, Time to be brave. The world does not see change until it sees honesty. I'm taking a risk here in many ways, but really there's no choice but to be brave, he writes. To not tell this story is to let my soul die. It is all I believe in, is all I hold dear. We have longed for someone who we can never have. We have all felt that ache, and ache for an all-American boy. And, the, and watching this video, I was like, oh my God, this is me when I was in high school or college, and you see that straight guy that you're kind of friends with, and you like get that little man crush thing on them and you want to kiss them and do all this stuff and then it just never happens because you know it can't happen so that's a good question maybe to our audience have you ever experienced that you know just you're gay and you're you meet someone who's straight but you really have a big crush on them is that what yeah. it is yeah so. oh yeah i have a lot of that growing up and you just growing can't do up, anything Growing up until now, too. I was going to say, now, there's somebody I oh, know there's a lot of right a now big too. crush on. Yeah, but you, can't, you just can't do anything. Yeah, so. uh, understandable. It's a, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, 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 a, it's a good music video that he did. Yeah, So, but you can go check it out. As of, I think, this weekend, that he's had nearly 220,000 hits. Only? Uh, with more 8,000 likes. Um, Should be millions his, by now. Well, I don't know. We should have looked at it when we watched it a little while ago. But that was when this article was put out on Sunday. So, um, He's not currently signed to a label and does not have a manager. But I'm sure that's going to change. You see somebody sees that, they're going to find a way to angle it and wrap it up. Mm -hmm. um, but you, We'll put the links on it so you can go watch it on YouTube. I think it's a great video and a great song. And it's good to see that somebody come out and says, I'm gay and I can sing country music and I'm going to be honest about it myself. So. And I can kiss guys too. And I can kiss guys even though they don't, they're not gay. So. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So check it out. All right. Here we go. For the geek. Okay, this is something that you have on your phone, on your on your car, right? But it connects to your to your phone, though, for your your GPS stuff like that. Yes, I use my Google Maps on my iPhone. Yeah, see, that's the point. We're gonna talk about it more later. But then this is actually a standalone device. It's Garmin's hundred thirty dollars smartphone uh, HUD limits distractions with uh, with light of line of sight directions. I guess it is a smartphone by Garmin. Well, that's weird. Well, Garmin makes the... They make GPS stuff. They make GPS stuff. But they're making, they're now making smartphones? Okay. No, so, I think... Yeah. Well, let's read the article. Okay. okay. We've become so dependent on GPS that a three-minute drive often means frequent glances at an in-car navigation companion. But taking our eyes off the road can be very dangerous, even if it's only for a moment. If you're fortunate enough to have one, a head-up display will let you get to your destination efficiently and safely. And Garmin's got a new aftermarket solution to keep you cruising on the cheap. The company's new HUD uh, projects uh, bright directions into a, uh, uh, into a transparent film mounted on your windshield. So serving up guidance with your, with your regular line of sight. It really it projects to your to your glass. It's, base, it's basically a um, heads up display. Yeah, it's heads up it's heads up display, and it's on your in on your windshield, so you can see it. So uh, the simple interface displays your current speed and speed limit. Now that that's that part that part's lame. Just give me directions, right? So uh, it's well, got it's, it's got turn arrows. Yeah, it's got turn arrows. 
which is also saying if you're if the speed limit's 45 and you're doing 55, it's warned you that you can get a ticket, especially saying, hey, you need to slow down. Oh, that'd be good. And it also lets you know that you're going to be getting to get the turn sooner or something. So. Yeah, so it's got turn arrows, the distance until you you your next turn, and then ETA. The Garmin HUD is compatible with Bluetooth-equipped smartphones running Garmin Street Pilot and Navigon apps. Navigon, I think it's about 50 bucks. Or well, it might be less now. It's an app for the so iPhone. Ba so basically, you can download the app to your iPhone and then buy this, and it puts the heads up. Display. That's right. Okay. So you spend one hundred thirty dollars more. So it's expected to be in stores this summer in, with the uh, suggested uh, retail price of one hundred twenty nine and ninety nine cents. So I'll so put the links on the website. Maybe you guys would like it. Okay. So let me ask you, what do you think of standalone GPSs? They're dead now, right? I don't think so. I think a lot a lot of people still use them because they because dealing with your phone and because it cuts off, it does all this other crap. You get phone calls and you lose your directions. You have to go back and find them. It's kind of aggravating. Mm -hmm. But on the on the GPS devices, you usually got your little screen and it follows along. And regardless of whatever else is going on, you still got it. It doesn't turn off. Yeah. It detects when it's dark outside, so it changes the light, so you can see, but so you can see the screen better. So, mm -hmm. um, I kind of like them. I don't own one. I've never really had the need for it. I mean, so I used to have one. Mike, Mike gave me one, and then they don't. I mean, we have iPhones. Why yeah. do you need one? And you can actually. I, I hook up my phone to an auxiliary cable, and it talks for your while you're I'm listening to a podcast or some music it kind of talks where your direction is anyway so turn left here turn right there yeah. so it kind of works as a standalone GPS anyway but this device is nicer because you don't have to glance down, down. yeah yeah you have to look down because it's right in your dashboard and I think some states have outlawed the dashboard <laughs> GPS's that once you mount up on the on glass. the front here like that yeah on, on the, the uh, glass like you got the ones that plug into the glass Oh, the one that, uh, okay, that plugs in the glass, okay, with the suction cup. With the suction yeah. cup because yeah. they're distracting or something. But my question, what happened with heads-up display? It was supposed to be this big thing that was coming and it never made I don't know. It. It's probably just used now for kids for watching movie, movies or something. I don't know. It used to be, I mean, because they used to show all the cars where you had the heads-up display where the speed and everything was on the glass. And it was all cool. Mm -hmm. Maybe it proved to be too distracting, but... Yeah. I know it's a lot easier to look straight forward when you're driving and be concentrating on that, what's going on, than looking over here to directions on your side or yeah. phones and stuff like that. But, so I but, wonder if it eventually will come back. But what's good about this, it's, it, it is projecting to your glass, right? So yeah. I guess it's easier. I mean, it's nicer because you, you, look, you still look straight and you yeah. see directions. However, the data is, is limited. You know, it's got turn left here, the, the directions here, there's numbers. There, it's pretty much like a big LCD. No, sorry. Big LED, meaning just you you know like your calculator in the eighties. Yeah, <laughs> it's got that, that, those no, those, uh, yeah. those lights only. That I think that's the only thing you see. Yeah, but if it takes off, it might be something they incorporated into windshields. And Maybe a two point oh would be something yeah. bigger and more screen like, and we actually show you the yeah. map. Maybe okay. it's not so bad. I like that. Yeah. Okay, so let's uh, move on to, to the bizarre. bizarre. Skype pranksters interrupt Zimmerman witness testimony. Have you? Have, did you see this? No. Uh, okay, I have the video in here, on, okay. but uh, we'll play it. We'll play it on, alongside. Okay. okay. A professor's testimony by Skype in the George Zimmerman trial Wednesday was interrupted by a series of noisy call notifications and alerts from pranksters, leading Judge Deborah Nelson to order the witness and the prosecutor to question him to hang up the phone. Seminole State College professor Scott Pleasant was giving his testimony about a class taken by Zimmerman who has pleaded not guilty to the charge of second-degree murder of 17-year-old Tavon Martin. Soon after the testimony started, however, the video call was bombarded with almost non-stop incoming call attempts. Since the live video stream was shown on a screen in the courtroom, the jarring visual and audio interruptions blocked the screen and made it difficult to hear Pleasant's testimony. Mm -hmm. Which my question, if he was called in for testimony, why wasn't he there? Uh, he couldn't because uh, I think uh, he was out, out in a different state. He was in a different state. Okay. They didn't have to fly him. But anyway, I did see the video. And I'm probably showing it to you as we speak right now. It's actually a... Uh, the, the, I wanted to take this up because the guy is a bear. <laughs> this guy who's uh, the professor, Scott yeah. Pleasance, who, uh, who taught in uh, the class where Zimmerman was. 
We're not here to, about Zimmerman. We're yeah. here to talk about here because of the talking assholes. About a, a guy that looks like a bear. That's yes. what we're here to talk about. He is the, uh, he is the uh, you know, uh, giving a testimony. He was on the phone and he's got a Skype. And then the, this, the Skype is on and the screen is on. It's being televised. As it, as, as it was being televised, the Skype call, after a few words, after a few sentences he already uh, uh, testified with, people were seeing it on TV and started calling. They calling via Skype, via, uh, you know, and then these well, assholes. Well, like we use via Skype, can't we make it so we're offline so people can't Exactly. See? That's what I do. When, do I, when I do interviews, I put it offline. I mean, not offline, but I put it invisible so nobody would see and uh, do not disturb so nobody can contact yeah. you. Did they show a Skype name and phone number? Yes, exactly. There was, there, they, everybody could see the Skype name that, is, that well, was being just, used. Dumbass people using modern day technology. I know, it was right. <laughs> it was so exactly funny. what that was. Everybody could see the Skype name, so every, people assholes just started calling about. Yeah. Few, so they had to close. When somebody calls you, calls you, you have to end the call and the call, you know, decline all the calls. So that's what happened to the screen. It got filled up, and you cannot see the uh, in, the uh, the bear <laughs> who's being interviewed, and they can they can they, you know this was just funny. Some people are just assholes. <laughs> okay. But that's just for the court being dumbass and not blocking that stuff out. Exactly. Like they they, they should have known better. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so what, one question, though. What they did, those people, while the, it, the, there's a, a testimony being done and they're pranking them, would that be obstruction of justice? I don't see why not. It could be, right? Yeah. Because you cannot proceed. And if the judge wanted to get real pissy about it, she could go to Skype and, and get all the logs. And subpoena all the logs and have all those people who was using that phone arrested. Who yeah. was that account arrested or charged? That's right. That's, I, I kind of thought it's obstruction of justice because it's obstructing the view of the the, the one giving yeah. the testimony. So, so. <laughs> yeah, I don't see so why not. It's Maybe. Interesting. Interesting. Put the links on the website. You guys check it out. And again, the uh, who's, who's, what's his name again? College professor Scott Pleasance is a bear. Okay. All right. So I guess that's the end of the show. <laughs> that's a good. Uh, uh, it's a good interview today with the Lone Star Bears. And yeah. uh, special thanks to to David Rich for joining us. And now we have a few shout outs. Yep. Uh, shout out to Daddy O'Donnell and his surgery on Tuesday. And hope all go, goes well to Patrick and Jerry on the new ranch out in BFE. And, of course, to Robbie for taking care of me and being a great boy. Aww. Hi, Robbie. I hope your dad uh, is, uh, goes well but, uh, this week. Everything will be fine. Yeah. I believe so. It's uh, down to a science now. Yeah. Everybody's confident about this. Okay. All right. So a uh, shout out to Howard from Arizona. I got to chat with him on Facebook and he said hey, he listened hey, to the Howard. show. Hey, Howard. And uh, thank you. Thank you for, for, you know, watching and supporting the show. Okay. All right. So I guess uh, that's it. It's this week is going to be busy because yeah. we ha we're actually doubling up because we won't be able to record next week. So well, you'll be recording some stuff, won't you? Yeah, I will still be recording some stuff. And then we'll be back with uh, uh, tomorrow with wait on the next episode. Are you going to get video from the Dick Doc? Oh yeah, I'll, I'll convince Dave. We probably should record at the Dick Doc. Yeah, how about under the Dick Doc? Under the Dick Doc, okay. we're going to do that. Okay, <laughs> that'd be awesome. We wanted to do that last year, but we just couldn't get around to it. We just ended up doing it on, on top of the Dick Doc. Yes, can I have your piss? piss. Yeah, piss. Piss. <laughs> piss. Can I have your piss. 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 Piss, piss. Oh my so. God, that was funny. Um, Mike does it much better though. Yeah, Mike, Mike, Mike can say it better. <laughs> All right, so thank you everyone for watching or listening. If you want to contact us, send your emails to show at bearpodcast.com. Or you can give us a call at 206-222-2327. That's 206-222-BEAR and leave us a voicemail for the show and we'll play it on the air. So give us a call and say, hey, I didn't like this. I like this. I think, you know, the country song singer is hot and great and he should be a chaser. Um, yada, yada, yada. <laughs> you know, whatever. We'll I'd like to have, talk I'll, to us. We like feedback. I have, I have yet to see a gay bear country singer. That would be awesome. I'm oh, sure. that. Oh, that's Vince Gill. What's his name again? Vince Gill. No, no, no. Vince Gill's gay. No. Who's the other bear? I forgot. There's another bear country singer. 
Anyway. Zach Brown? Zach Brown. No, no, you, uh, you wish. I wish. I'm sure he eats a lot of pussy. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Here, kitty, 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 kitty. Here. Pussy. Okay, so, uh, yes. Uh, uh, subscribe by iTunes. Also on uh, Vimeo and YouTube. And uh, if you have an event, like uh, just like um, when we had um, uh, Dave, Dave and Rich, uh, email us, events at bearpodcast.com. And yeah, follow us on Facebook and Twitter and go to the official website at bearpodcast.com. Thank you everyone for watching or listening and we will catch you guys on the next episode of Bear Podcast. Many wolves and many hugs. Wolf, what a bear. Podcast your ass. Wolf, what a bear. Wolf, what a bear. Podcast your ass. Wolf, what a bear. Wolf, what a bear. Make it far enough. That's better. Okay. But people say, yeah, you kind of look like him. And I just think, geez, I wasn't thinking about it like that. If somebody sticks up a finger in your ass, then you just run around naked. Uh, it, it happens.